Hello, everybody. Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you're at. If we haven't had the opportunity to meet, my name is Noelle Ford, and I am the CEO of Neuromanagement, the company behind Versus. And if you haven't had a chance to check out Versus, Versus is a five-channel wireless mobile EEG headset, and it works with an app. We're going to talk about some of those details today. Um, and we also have another webinar that is recorded and posted um, on our support site, or you can contact us for kind of an overview if you don't know what Versus is. As we let people filter in to the webinar today, I wanted to just take a moment to see kind of who the audience is. So <clears throat> for those of you who are watching, if you wouldn't mind, put a one in the chat if you are a professional looking to utilize verses in your practice with your clients. Okay, Kevin, that's great. Tony, all right. <clears throat> All right, Kathy, fantastic. That's really great to see because we feel like Versus is a really fantastic tool for our professionals who have a lot of skill sets that can be utilized in the office. And what Versus allows us to do is see more clients because you can send it home with clients. Oh, okay. Hi, Tori. Tori? All right, I'm going to just go ahead and get started to um, make sure that we respect everybody's time today. As I said, um, we have another webinar that you guys can check out that's already recorded. Um, if you want kind of an overview of what Versus is and how you can expand your practice with it, we recorded that a couple of weeks ago because we do recognize that in these trying times, as we are all trying to find a solution to see people more frequently um, with the COVID restrictions, uh, mobile is a really great option. And so it's important to understand how Versus can be utilized to expand your practice and help more people, um, but still make sure that you are maintaining control of those sessions and um, supervising your clients. So check that out if you haven't had an opportunity. What I wanted to do um, today is I wanted to set some expectations about Versus. And um, so we're going to go over some tips and tricks for using Versus with your clients. And the reason that I think that this is important is because um, I and my support staff spend a decent amount of time helping providers understand how to explain Versus to their clients and to help their clients um, work through some of the connection issues or maybe the technology challenges. Um, and so we thought it was important to do kind of a level set on the expectations for Versus. While it is a five channel wireless dry sensor mobile EEG headset um, that we think is fantastic, we also recognize that just like any other system, um, whether it's a wired system or any other mobile option, there are always the chance for technical difficulties. So we put this webinar together today to help you feel more confident and comfortable helping your clients utilize Versus at home. So we're gonna jump in here. <clears throat> so as I said, your success uh, is our priority. We want you to maintain control and to be able to comfortably and confidently help your clients gain access to their brain physiology anywhere that they are. So we pride ourselves on having created a really great end user product. And what I mean by that is right out of the box, anybody who is not an EEG expert should be able to take the headset, put the headset on correctly, if they're following the quick start guide, the instructions, and get the app downloaded, create a user account, take what we're going to go over here called a neuro performance assessment, and then jump right into the exercises. 
we focused when we were designing versus on that end user experience because we wanted it to be very simple, very user friendly. That is only going to facilitate your clients to have better success if they have a better experience. So, like I said, with any system, you may see some challenges with the technology. And so we don't want to paint it as a perfect experience, but we want to paint it as, as a really easy to use system. So we're going to go over a couple of commonly asked questions. So the first thing that I spend a lot of time talking to our partners about is, you know, who should be using Versus? And it's important to recognize that you as a professional should always be in control of that decision and you should be determining not just is versus correct for your client, but also what protocol is best for your client. We have our protocols listed right there on our support site and utilizing our professional dashboard, you can actually override any automatic assignments of the protocols. So it's important that you stay in control um, and monitor and supervise those sessions. And then as you're thinking about who versus would work well for, um, it is a great end user experience, but it does require the user to be able to have something on their head, to feel a little bit of pressure because those sensors have to get down to the scalp in order to make contact with the scalp and measure EEG, just like any other system and it requires them to sit still. It's important that they sit still, just like with any other um, EEG system, because EEG is very susceptible to artifact. And so we wanna make sure that we're getting as clean data as possible. So we need our users to sit nice and still as they're utilizing Versus. Just because it's a mobile option doesn't mean that some of the same parameters that are required for any EEG system don't apply. What can Versus do for you? So um, as you can see here, this slide is really about who is best um, as a clientele for Versus. So when we first started this mission, we started in high performing professionals, mostly in athletics, but also um, executives. So when we designed it, we had that end user in mind. What we have found is that with a little bit of guidance from our partners, a lot of um, a greater audience basically um, can utilize Versus, but it does require a little bit of help from our partners to make sure that they feel comfortable utilizing the hardware, so the headset, as well as the software. It's important to remember that Versus, um, while it's great and has 14 different protocols, it is limited in terms of focusing on relaxation, so we have some stress type of protocols, minimizing our stress, managing our stress better, quieting our mind when we have the opportunity to, and also focus, so um, impulse control, attention regulation, all of those types of, of uh, categories, those clients are gonna do really well with our system. And then kind of secondarily, what we have found is that, um, especially with our stress protocols, you're gonna see improvements in sleep as well. So sometimes people use Versus to help them get better sleep. However, just like any system, it's not a magic cure. And we certainly don't want our partners to be framing it as this super easy, like putting a Fitbit on or an Apple Watch. It's still EEG um, and it's not a magic cure for everything. So we like to partner with our professionals to make sure that they have the tools to utilize the Versus system in the best way possible. What we have found is that a lot of our professionals like to assign an at-home protocol and then in office with clients, once we get past this COVID situation and we can start seeing clients again more regularly in office, um, then you can do those more unique and specific protocols with your wired systems in office. If I haven't made it clear already. The Versus headset has five sensors, but those sensor sites are static. So that's why we have predetermined protocols that you can utilize. If you're not familiar with our sensor sites, certainly check out our support site. Ton of information there, but um, the sensor sites really quickly are FZ, CZ, PZ, and then C3 and C4. And you can imagine with those five sensor sites, 
um, we're able to target the motor cortex and really um, look at frontal lobe engagement as well as helping the mind quiet with that parietal site. So those are some of the things that we see versus best utilized for and the types of people that we see versus best utilized with. Now to the tips and the tricks of troubleshooting. Why isn't my headset connecting? At some point, if you're using Versus, you're going to have a client ask you that, or ideally you're trying it on yourself and you're gonna run into that problem. What we do at the beginning of any time that the headset is put on is we have a little sensor verification screen. And for those of you in the EEG field, you think of this as impedance testing. What this does is in a very simplistic form, so you see the picture right there on the slide, um, those bright green dots represent each sensor site. And we need each sensor site to be bright green before the system will allow you to continue. The reason for that is very simple. We want to be recording and utilizing in our assessment and our exercises clean EEG. So we're trying to minimize the movement, the artifact, um, all of that. So it's important that we get a really good signal. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that those sensors are down to the scalp. We also wanna minimize our movement. We also wanna um, relax, particularly our jaw, um, because that is going to create muscle tension that is an artifact. And if your clients have heavily styled hair, particularly with a lot of hair product in, um, or maybe they have braids or something that's in the way of the sensor sites, certainly that's gonna be a challenge with those static sensor placements. So it's important um, that you are taking that into consideration as you're determining who would best benefit from a versus headset. Now, I want to just let you know that as we go through these tips and tricks, um, myself and my support staff have been at exhibit booths and have done you know, eight hours a day of trying headsets on different people's heads. And honestly, it's pretty rare if we don't use these, uh, if we use these tips and tricks that you're not going to be connecting well. So it just takes a little bit of um, patience and we're gonna get to that next and making sure that those sensors are clean enough. Um, you don't have to clean it between every single use. If it's a single use, type of client, like someone takes it home. They really don't have to clean it every single time. Um, certainly if you're in office using Versus and you're going between clients, you're gonna wanna take an alcohol swab to those sensors um, to make sure that they're clean in between clients. But um, over time, you can see a little bit of buildup with our sensor conditioner um, behind the sensor if you're use, using it for a very long time. However, uh, we have a very easy solution. You can pop the sensors, um, the sensor cover off, take the sensors out, do a quick warm water wash with them and pop them right back in. So you can solve that problem pretty easily and you really don't have to do that intensive a clean very often. Now, how do you improve connection time? So I like to say the four Ps. First is practice. If you haven't tried Versus on your own head, it's going to be difficult for you to coach another person through the setup process, simply because you won't know these tips and tricks and what it feels like on the head. So it's important that you try it yourself before you start uh, using Versus with your clients. Now this can be that you have your own Versus headset, but it can also just be that you try one on that you intend to rent out or to sell to one of your clients. Next is paste. For those of you in the EEG world, you know 1020 10, paste, but we call it sensor conditioner just for general users. The idea is that although our sensors, um, our dry electrodes do connect without paste, we understand that many users are a little impatient. And so we send with each headset a little bit of paste. And honestly, it lasts quite a while because we instruct you to use just a tiny amount, just a, I call it a lotion thin amount of paste on your fingertip, rub it on the ends of the sensors, and that is going to dramatically decrease the connection time. Now, you don't have to use it. If it's your own headset especially, those sensors are gonna get used to your skin and your pH levels in your skin, and they are going to connect pretty easily each time. 
Um, you still need to make sure that the sensors are through the hair. So sometimes you have to physically kind of part the hair underneath the sensors. But um, if you're applying just a thin layer of that paste, it's gonna connect pretty quick. I can tell you that looking at our database, on average, we're getting all five sensors connected. So we call that a sensor verification segment within 90 seconds or less. If you look at traditional systems, that's still much faster than our traditional systems when we're using five or more channels. So it's pretty quick. We do just want to set that expectation with our client that they may have to use a little bit of patience, wiggle that headset down through the hair onto the scalp, and use a little bit of that paste so that they aren't feeling frustrated and you're not feeling frustrated in helping them. Next is pressure. Pressure is important because um, the headset being wireless, it has nothing to hold on to. So I'm actually going to use my headset here to show you. In the spring on the side of the headset here, there's actually a nice spring. And when you are putting the headset on, you're going to want to pull straight down on both ear cans. I'm just going to demonstrate that very quickly. So here, and you're going to pull straight down like this. And oftentimes, I tell people to just pull straight down after they've wiggled it down through their hair. Pull straight down for about 30 seconds. Maybe you don't need that long, but as soon as those five sensor sites light up all green, then um, it actually requires that they're a stable signal too, right? We don't just connect as soon as all five go green. So it actually has a little delay. In that delay time, you wanna let go of the headset and ideally those springs have been activated to make sure that that pressure stays. Next is patience. And that's kind of what I was just alluding to is holding for 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds at most. Um, but it's just important that we use a little bit of patience and remember that while this is a really cool system and it's one of the first of its kind, it's still EEG and EEG is a very, very tiny signal. And we need to make sure that we appreciate how fast that 90 seconds really is in order to get five channels of EEG data. It's important to set that expectation with your clients that we are measuring tiny electrical signals that are going through like three layers at least um, between hair, skin, bone, um, and CF fluid. So it's important to set that expectation with your clients. Next is what else can you try? If you've tried those four Ps and you're still struggling, you wanna make sure that the Bluetooth is connected. It sounds silly, but the headset connects to the iDevice through Bluetooth. So if the iDevice has its Bluetooth turned off, then it might not be obvious to the user, um, but that is a very common troubleshooting thing that we see. Next is change your environment. You might not know it, but you might be in a very noisy electrical environment. Um, if you're in an office where there's a ton of servers or a ton of other computers or anything like that, um, there's actually a lot of environmental noise that can be picked up. And while our headset is really well shielded, we want to be in as clean as possible of an electrical environment. Most homes and general offices are fine for this. Um, but every once in a while, if somebody is in an airport or or something like that, you might see some challenges. And so you want to um, try to get them to at least start by using verses in a quiet, calm place where they can figure out how to put the headset on and make sure that they know how to connect it very well in a easy to use environment. And then as they transition, they can certainly travel with the headset and use it anywhere. Next is fixing posture. This is a big one and it really helps for you as a partner to demonstrate this for them. As I mentioned earlier, those springs are holding the headset down in place. However, if a person is tilting this way or even backwards, um, there might be, it might be kind of pulling because of gravity, one of the sensors off. The most common one is PZ in that um, example, particularly if they're leaning their head back. And so what you want to do is tell them to sit up straight, have good posture. If you're into biofeedback as well, that's always nice to teach them um, about breathing. Maybe they do some deep breathing with that nice straight posture, a little diaphragmatic breathing in there as they're getting that headset connected. 
they're pulling straight down, they're keeping their chin nice and level. And what they're gonna do is just hold their device um, in front of them a little bit higher. So they're not having to tilt their head, but they can actually look down and that might in fact minimize some of the eye blinking as well. Um, so those are some important tips that you want to coach your clients, especially at the beginning, so that you're setting this expe expectation that it's not like you know a Garmin heart rate monitor or a Fitbit that you just throw on and it very quickly measures. Um, while it's great, it's still a difficult signal to connect with, so we need to make sure we have that good posture, you know, clean environment from an electrical standpoint, make sure that our Wi-Fi and or our data is on and our Bluetooth is connected. Why is the app not working? So like any app out there, sometimes there are glitches. Um, the, I just mentioned the Wi-Fi, that is a big one. If your office has um, spotty Wi-Fi or sometimes the Wi-Fi goes in and out, that can be problematic. If you have the opportunity um, or you're sending it home with a client, just try to have them use their data. It doesn't take that much and they'll be able to use it with their data instead of Wi-Fi if the Wi-Fi is problematic. However, most of the time, Wi-Fi is gonna be easily connected. Sometimes you just need to turn the Wi-Fi on and off. Sounds very simplistic, but um, it's an easy troubleshooting tip to do with your clients and a lot of times it works. Next is check for updates. If the user is having a difficult time with their app, um, it's always a good idea to go ahead and check the app store for any updates to the app. Make sure that they have the latest downloaded. Next is restart the app. You need to be able to coach your clients to just go ahead and um, totally close the app. So oftentimes that's a double click. Um, I guess on the new iPhones, it's just a, a swipe up, but you're gonna wanna be able to close the app entirely and reboot it. This is very common, even for PC-based um, equipment and software. I know personally, I have used in office um, plenty of EEG systems that oftentimes you just restart the program and it fixes whatever glitch happened. We don't expect that to happen a lot. We feel very confident that we've built Versus to work very well, but it's just like any other software. Occasionally you'll get a glitch. Sometimes just restarting is going to solve that problem. Finally, restarting the device. This happens much less frequently than the three above, um, but sometimes you can restart your entire device and that will solve the problem. Sometimes it's a Wi-Fi issue, sometimes it's a Bluetooth issue, sometimes your Bluetooth um, is connecting to something else, so there's, there's challenges there, um, but sometimes just restarting the device will solve that problem. And I didn't mention it before, but if you aren't familiar with Bluetooth low energy, a lot of people make this mistake, I'll go back to the, um, the Bluetooth piece here, you wanna make sure that Bluetooth is enabled, but you're not sending your user to the settings to connect the Bluetooth in the traditional way. What you're actually doing is just having them open the app, and as they go through the process of that sensor verification, the first step is connecting the Bluetooth, it happens right there in the app, so it's very, very simple. But we don't wanna be sending users to the settings because that um, will confuse users and it won't work that way. Next, why can't I complete the NPA? The neural performance assessment is based on traditional EEG assessment. So we took an eyes closed baseline and we combined it with a, <clears throat> excuse me, a continuous performance task, which is a visual go, no go. What we're looking for there is yes, the EEG, but also the behavioral responses. So you're looking at omission errors, commission errors, and total errors, as well as response time and response time variability. That's a lot of data and it's really fun to analyze with your clients. But in order to have that assessment be as valuable as possible, we've made it standardized. So if you do not complete either task, the eyes closed, which can be anywhere from two to 10 minutes, or you um, don't make it through the entire CPT, which is about 11 and a half minutes, um, then you're going to have to start at the beginning of each task. I know that that can be frustrating from a user perspective. 
However, from a standardization perspective, it's really important to make sure that that data is meaningful. And so we don't want to have, you know, the first two segments of the, the CPT be completed in one week and then the other three segments be completed in the next week. From a data perspective management, that just doesn't make a lot of sense, um, particularly for interpreting how well they're doing at regulating attention. As you probably remember, omission errors are going to tell you more about inattention. Commission is more about impulsivity. If we have challenges at combining that data all into one segment, um, it's just not as valid. So it's important to complete that NPA all in one sitting. I usually have clients sit for about 30 minutes, just plan on 30 to 45 minutes for the session. Um, if you're doing it in office, which I highly recommend that you do the NPA in the office, that gives you an opportunity to help them connect the headset for the first time. And it also makes sure that they can complete the NPA in a um, very calm, quiet space. That then gives you the opportunity to go over the data right there in, um, in the office with them, which is a really nice perk. You might wanna turn the phone or the iDevice on do not disturb mode. This is gonna limit um, them getting phone calls or texts as their screen is open. Um, <clears throat> and then if possible, you can even do airplane, airplane mode, um, but just keep that Wi-Fi on, uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on. And then finally, just like any other EEG system, you want to minimize the eye blinking, the jaw clenching, the swallowing, that's all going to create um, artifact. And yes, we are artifacting on the fly, but we can only handle so much. So if there's too much artifact in either segment, the eyes closed or the NPA, it's going to boot them out and it's going to make them restart because the data is not clean enough. And I understand that that's frustrating from an end user perspective. So you want to coach them in the beginning to sit still. And we actually have some experiences in the app that help with that. Um, but that is, again, going back to the validity of the data. It's important that we have really good data there. Now, as I just said, if you can't finish the NPA because maybe it's a squirmy kid or maybe it's a squirmy adult, um, whatever the situation, and they can't finish the NPA, that professional uh, dashboard allows you to override the system. So you can actually go in and see whatever data has posted for the eyes closed because it will post data for just the eyes closed portion. Um, which gives you the theta to beta power ratio. It also gives you the alpha to beta power ratio at PZ. Um, theta to beta, of course, is at CZ. And it tells you a little bit about how they are doing at quieting their mind and attention regulation. Obviously, it's better to have more data, so we want them to complete the CPT. But if they can't, then you can go into their account on your dashboard and you can override and just assign them a protocol based on your in-office experience with them, as well as the eyes closed data. Next is results. So this is important, whether you're doing um, EEG in office or sending something home like versus with your clients, it's important to coach them about what to expect in terms of results. Um, changing anything in our physiology, it takes time and it takes practice. Oftentimes, um, I make the analogy of, you know, going to the weight room, you lift one time, you're not going to see a huge increase in your muscles, and you're certainly not going to see a huge increase in your strength, but you do it a little bit every day. And then over time, you're gradually going to see um, an increase in uh, your muscle volume, as well as your strength, your ability to lift heavier things. So it's a very similar um, concept with EEG. We do it a little bit at a time. We oftentimes rec recommend 20 minutes per day, three times a week. As a provider, you have the ability to um, manipulate those times. So you can allow them more time throughout each day or less time throughout each day, depending on the client and your expertise. Um, but ultimately we wanna do a little bit at a time and you wanna set that expectation for the clients. We have set in our system a minimum of 450 minutes. That's based on some early research we did with a very healthy baseball population. There's a study posted on that if you have any interest. Um, but that data let us see that we did pre and post QEEGs, and we can see an EEG change in the users who used it for that minimum amount of time. 
But uh, as a professional, you should be able to tell them that they might need more time based on whatever symptoms they're experiencing and whatever you think as a professional is appropriate for them. 450 minutes, really we look at that as kind of a minimum threshold. <clears throat> Why am I not making progress? Kind of going back to the results piece here. Um, it's important to coach your clients, and I'll be quick, I know we're almost out of time here, but um, it's important to coach your clients that as they're looking at their version of the user dashboard, they should be looking at points and optimal zone time um, and game level. Those are the three things that they're looking at and that, that they should be focusing on. We want to see them increasing optimal zone time, which by the way, is a very hard thing to get. It might be one thing that we're updating this year um, to make it a little bit easier, but optimal zone time is just that, it's optimal zone time. So it's when they are doing really well at all three frequency bands that we're asking them to manipulate, that means um, that it's challenging. It's challenging to get that time. So in a 20 minute segment, you might only get one to two minutes of optimal zone time and that's perfectly acceptable. As they get better at producing that more optimal brain state, it will become more challenging as they level up. Again, going back to that weightlifting analogy, um, if we just always do the same weight and the same reps every single time, we're not going to see much increase in our strength. Um, therefore, we need to make it a little bit harder. So we're doing that kind of behind the scenes for the client using um, our uh, leveling system. Now, you as a professional via the dashboard, you're going to get to see the level set on each of the frequency bands that we're monitoring. Um, but the user is just going to focus on the single digit um, a single game level value, which makes it a little bit easier, again, from that end user perspective, not to get too caught up in the frequency bands and all of that. That's your job as a professional to monitor, but ultimately um, they should just be focusing on how they feel, how that internal state feels, um, how are they volitionally controlling that internal state, what associations they're starting to make with how they feel when they're doing better in the games, and then not to beat themselves up if they end up leveling back down because Again, going back to that weightlifting analogy, if they if we put too much weight on the bench press and they can't lift it, doesn't do them much good. So instead, we try that. If it's too hard, we take it off. So we move them back down if they struggle too much. We want to make sure that they get an appropriate amount of reward throughout the gameplay. <clears throat> you also want to just remind them that they're their state experience might be impacting their results. So if they didn't get a lot of sleep, they've got a lot of stress happening, those things certainly, just like an in-office session, can influence the results. So just to stick with it and stay consistent. With that, I know we're a few minutes over. I do want to just leave the chat box open if anybody has any additional questions that we haven't covered today. The point of today was really um, to set some expectations with you as a professional to let you know that we have designed this to be very end user friendly and then combined with the professional dashboard gives you a ton of control to monitor and supervise those sessions remotely, um, but that there are still some technical difficulties just like with any system. I'm not seeing any questions pop up in the chat box, probably because we're slightly over time. But with that, I will end um, in just a little bit of a reminder here how you can connect with us. If you are a professional, we have a private Facebook page for our partners. Um, certainly you can contact us at customer support, look at our support site, a ton of great information on there. And um, we have a really good social media presence, um, thanks to Sophia, who's on the line here too. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have any additional questions, please reach out.